Hi guys, it's me Ty coming from my home here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia and uh, today I wanted to talk about date night in Cambodia, how it all works here. Um, it's, it's different than Thailand, you know, after spending all those years in Thailand with their culture. Like Thai, they're, they're a lot more like American culture where to save money, um, they'll go into 7-Eleven or any of the normal convenience stores and they'll buy a bunch of beer and chips and whatever food out of the convenience store and and uh, take it out on the beach and throw out a, a blanket and sit on and eat together but here in Cambodia they don't really do that like I, I was really surprised because you go to Riverside and I, I expected all the all the um, Cambodian people to go across walk across the street across the heavy traffic go to 7-Eleven and buy water and steam energy drink and coca-cola um, to save money but but they don't um, actually all on Riverside there there's uh, ladies with uh, carts there and they sell um, they sell coca-cola and their steam energy drink uh, about every every different type of beer you can think of and, and they buy a whole bunch of ice and they throw just dump it all over it and then they also sell um, they have a little hot plate with a little fire under it and they dump some water in there, create steam. And uh, they'll have uh, like pork balls on a stick just like you would see in Thailand at all like their food courts. And they'll have like what looks like summer sausage on there too. And then a lot of them have a giant sheet of, of jerky. It's, they said it's not actually beef jerky. I'm not, they said it's probably made up of a whole bunch of different types of meat but it's really good. It's got tons of pepper on it. And that sheet of jerky is probably about the size of a piece of, of copy printer paper. So, you know, like eight inch by 11 inches or whatever, but it's pretty expensive though. It's $3 and uh, it, it definitely won't fill you up. But, but yeah, all these Kamai guys with their, their girlfriend or whatever, that's what they do. They, they go and sit out in Riverside and they'll walk up to one of these vendors here and they'll They'll get a few beers and and uh, a plastic cup and just pick out a whole bunch of the different um, uh, pork on a stick or whatever and sausage on a stick and hot dogs on a stick and I think all those sell for like 50 cents for like a hot dog on a stick and then the water the small bottles of water that they sell I think they're at 1,000 reels so 25 cents and then the a can of coca-cola or a can of steam that's going to be 3,000 reels so 75 cents and those vendors they always have a plastic cup with ice to dump it in for you and that doesn't cost any extra and that's just what they all do and and uh, someone will go out there with a bunch of their friends whether it be a whole bunch of guys together or a whole bunch of girls together or a mix of all of them together classmates whatever and then the expats you know the foreigners that retired here or are living and working here or started a family here what they end up liking to do is on every corner across from Riverside there's these really nice restaurants with uh, um, tables out out front there and uh, they sell a lot of them brag about serving like 700 different types of cuisine there so there the expats can get their cheeseburger and french fries or a steak with a baked potato or Thai food or Cambodia food and that's where they all eat and those waitresses and waiters there are always so darn nice they're uh, it, it's usually Cambodia staff but uh, like I said they're they're really friendly so um, just a just a really good vibe just everybody here is just so nice around here and then yeah, as for the movie theater situation what I noticed like I always go to Soria shopping center to have my dinner or, Throughout the day, I'll walk up here to Aeon Mall, and I always like to walk by the movie theater, see what's playing, because that's always just been a big part of my life. You know, growing up, you know, taking my girlfriends out on a for a nice supper, and then we go out to the um, out to the movies. You know, but honestly, here the movies are the most popular over noon hour because the school kids they get out at 10:30, and they go back to school at like 1:30, so they get like a a three hour lunch break and that's why their school hour school days are so darn long around here so those kids they have nothing better to do so they take their girlfriends uh to the movie theater oh, oh, um and that's who you, like so those are the main customers you're gonna see you might some 
sometimes see like a, a dad with taking his kids there, you know, as a treat or whatever. But for the most part, it's, it's mostly the high schoolers and junior high students that uh, um, patronize the, the movie theaters. And, uh, but yeah, that's, like I said, that's kind of the, what everybody does for a date. And, and I, I don't know, I, I kind of like it because in the U.S. just everything's gone so darn expensive. I, I mean, you go out to eat, yeah, it's, I don't know, I used to go out to eat for every darn meal in the U.S. I'd, I'd go out to Buffalo Wild Wings and there would be $16 for a darn meal and that's without the tip. And, and I just always thought that was ridiculous because the United States is the only country that's really a, tried to adopt that stupid tipping culture. You're paying enough for a darn meal as it is I mean, it just, it really breaks your bank. So in the end there, I actually just quit patronizing. You kind of vote with your, your wallet, they always say, you know? So I quit even going to any of those restaurants that require tipping because I, I just don't support that type of culture anymore. So, um, and then growing up as a child, you know, in the nineties and the early 2000s when I was a school kid, you know, it, um, I remember my grandparents after, church on Sundays we'd always uh, go to the grocery store and we grandma would bring the big cooler with lots of ice in it and she'd buy a loaf of bread and buy a bunch of bologna or or um, salami uh, lunch meat has the little black peppers in it and she'd buy macaroni salad and buy potato salad and some Pepsi and potato chips and she'd throw out the blanket on the ground in the park and that's what we us kids would eat and it was so good and and it saved our family so much money and then you could at least afford you know to have a big meal with your your family or friends and stuff like that and and they used to always have the card parties too when i was growing up in high school uh, my grandparents they would each of them once a week or once a month all their their couple's friends would invite everybody over to their house and they'd have a steak dinner with baked potatoes at their house or whatever and bring out the bowls of candy and mixed nuts and and just play uh, whist and pinochle and and all the different car games just visit you know and and uh it was nice it, it would be it would be nice if the u.s would actually go back to that culture and um yeah because even with my other grandparents growing up in the indian reservation they never had much money and when us kids would get dropped off there for the summer and spend our summer vacation there and then when they'd uh bring my um us kids back up to meet my mom you know that was 60 mile a 60 mile drive us kids we never went out to eat my grandma would just packed the little lunch box with ice in it and we'd have cheese sandwiches or bologna sandwiches with chips and and some pepsi in there too so um yeah it it doesn't take a bunch of money to have a good date night or time with your friends and family and loved ones um yeah just there should be more of that invite your your uh friends and family over to your house and make a nice meal it, money will go a lot further and so all right if you guys like this content like share and subscribe and i'll just keep kicking out more content here from uh, phnom penh cambodia so all right later